Eagle. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take. How your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest. And, well, he's in the legal world, so maybe I better not say that he's a repeat offender. But he's here on a regular basis. Jonathan Johnson is with us from the Meyer Law Firm. Welcome. Thanks for having me, man. Glad to have you with us. And let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance-related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. Just remember that's the number you call any time for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Well, I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan, a plan to save you money. I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference. 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. We start every day on Ron Siegel Radio with a celebration. Today, I'm looking at our celebrations of the day. You know, some days you got them all. Some days it's a little light. So for those of you who are moms and grandmas out there, not that I am uh, a chauvinist, but uh, you're probably more adept with the kids at National Coloring Book Day. I, I lose patience pretty quickly. I'd rather have my, well, I better not go there. But National Coloring Book Day is today. Now having beaten anorexia, we can all join in in a celebration of National Ice Cream Sandwich Day. Yeah, I, I, shouldn't that be every day? You know, so I, it just bugs me though they get those uh, the sandwich right on your on your fingers where some of the things melt off there. So I like that. Uh, what is it? The uh, What's the cookie that they have, the, the real nice, the good cookie that's at all the, the malls? I, I hear at the malls. I don't go to malls. I don't know. There's real, it's a chocolate chip cookie filled with ice cream, whatever the heck they call it. it they call that an ice cream sandwich too, don't they? Yeah, moving right along. If I could talk about food all day, you probably wouldn't listen in. You'd probably want to be going to a restaurant somewhere, right, Mark? Isn't that the idea? Dow Jones Industrial Average recovering a little bit. It was off. Quite a bit early this morning. It was off over 100 points. Now we're down 62.91 on the Dow. The S&P 500 has all recovered that one this morning. It's up 5.55 as we speak right now. Always worried about the trade wars. That's what's going on right now. Call it uh, just like going to the gym from what I hear. Now, I don't go to the gym very often. But from what I hear, they talk about a short-term pain for a long-term gain. That's probably what we're looking at in these trade wars. Uh, it might be a little bit of painful, a little rocky road right now. Not the ice cream, but a rock, rocks in the road. Rocky road right now in the marketplace. That's probably what we're experiencing as we look at what the numbers are going to be in this trade battle. But long-term, we will win. And it'll end up being a bit better for all of us. Looking at the markets this morning in the bond market, we look at that one on a regular basis. 10-year treasury down on the yield, down on the rate, interest rate down a little bit, only two basis points, 2.99 right now. The Fannie Mae 30-year, the, that's the bond. The bond is up, so interest rates on that are down right now. Although you will hear in the media, and you hear live, live commentary right now on Ron Siegel Radio, but the market is going to, you're going to hear the news come out at some point in the day if you can get around. I don't think we're on Russia anymore. I think we're on collusion or, I don't know, I can't keep track of what the lame media, oh no, it's, uh, they're talking about Jim Acosta today. Yeah, the loon over at CNN. And that's the, the subject matter because they didn't want to cover the fact that the remains of, I think it was 54 individuals coming back in Hawaii from North Korea yesterday. We don't know 
if those are all American remains. We don't know anything about those remains, but it looked good. It looked like a sign, a positive sign coming from North Korea. We would not want the mainstream media to mention that at all. Now, they don't talk about those kind of things, but they want the other issues. But if they did talk about the markets, they'd probably be telling you that interest rates, the Freddie Mac mortgage market survey came out this morning. And that survey shows that interest rates are up on the 30 year from 4.54 last week to 4.60 this week. I shared with you yesterday, we're up about five eighths of a percent over the numbers from last year. So that is kind of where those numbers are settling in. Five-eighths up. Probably keep seeing that go up as the economy continues to strengthen. We did see from the Federal Reserve, they talked about the economy strengthening yesterday. We'll talk more about that in the Mortgage Minute when we get to that a little later in this morning's broadcast. We like to chat always about the Mortgage Minute, giving you the why the markets are doing what they're doing, as opposed to anybody and their mother can actually tell you what the markets are doing. They don't tell you why they are doing what they're doing. Uh, moving right along, it was yesterday, first day of the, uh, the Man Manafort trial. Why is it that it's being handled in New York and not from the special counsel in D.C.? That's a fascinating question. Obviously, the president has been calling for Jeff Sessions to end the Mueller probe. That's another one of those issues that we're seeing. It's fascinating to watch it because what the president is saying is he should end the probe. He's not ordering the state, the uh, Justice Department to do so. He's just saying as a, his opinion, that's what they should do. After all this money, all this time, and nothing to show for it, how do you argue with that part? I can't figure out who's arguing the point, but I'm sure that if it's the president doing it, the Democrats are arguing it. Just another way. That's just kind of the way it is. Uh, moving right along, we've continued looking at the markets. Uh, so we did see that oil is up a dollar and a quarter a barrel today. Gas prices on the national level, 2.874 from AAA here in Taxifornia. We are at 3.623, 3.623. If you want to fill up, the place to go is Alabama. Fill up your gas tank in Alabama, $2.57.5. That's over a dollar and an, over a dollar five less than we pay in Taxifornia. Hard to believe, but yeah, it is what it is. We are one of the highest prices in the country, and we like to pay as much as we can in tax. And you know, at least we are. We have one benefit here: nobody's going to be using a plastic straw to siphon your gas off, right? In California, we're not. A, plastic straws are probably they're worse than guns. Think about that one. Guns you can have in California, plastic straws you cannot have in California. You, you just gotta. You got to go with it in this state, right? I know I've got that. Uh, this is ridiculous. Yeah, that one works. Amazing. Uh, what else do we have in the news today? I did see there was quite a few stories that were fascinating me. You know, I'm a, I'm a simple guy. So I did notice that there's a, it's not Prime Day on Amazon, but there are some really cool cool items there. If you have not done this one, this is a great deal I saw. Amazon Basics right now, they've got a six sheet cross cut paper and credit card shredder today. $29.99 on Amazon. It's one of their, their big basics. So if you're worried about identity theft, and if you're not worried about it, you must be living in a bubble somewhere because it is a big issue. I can tell you and this was, a, this was humorous to me because those of you that know me, know me well, know I do not even know which end of a screwdriver to use, right? I mean, I've imported millions of screwdrivers in my lifetime. I cannot tell you how to use one. <laughs> Yet, my credit card was hacked and used at AutoZone. Now, that's an issue. I've got a bad feeling about this. Right? I don't even know what they sell at AutoZone. I thought it was a place where you go to buy cars. I understand. Somebody told me it's actually car parts. Now, why in the world would I use a credit card at AutoZone? Right? I mean, if the mechanic can't fix it, I'm in serious trouble because I have no clue how to do any of that kind of stuff. That's just the way it is. But that's where my card was hacked and used. Uh, and I think it was actually one out in the valley. 
So I understand these issues, yet it still happens. You got to protect yourself. That's a great deal on Amazon right now. Did note, did you check this out earlier in the uh, trading session today? You got to love this one. Amazon. Uh, not Amazon, Apple, I'm sorry. Apple, Apple Computer, the company, not the, not the fruit. They became the first publicly traded company to be valued at $1 trillion. Now, those of you that are trivia people, there was an oil company that was valued at a trillion dollars, but it was part of a communist country. So you can't count that one. Yeah, Amazon, though, think about this. What would uh, I mean, Steve Jobs, what would he think right now as, Am as uh, Apple being valued at a trillion dollars? Amazing. Milestone marks the first financial fruit of stylish technology that has redefined society since two mavericks named Steve started the company 42 years ago today. Wozniak and Jobs. But they're, uh, Wozniak, you don't even hear from Wozniak anymore. I wonder what, what, what he's up to. He was doing uh, concerts for a while. Don't know where he is today, but that is the story of the day. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, we are going to be chatting. Jonathan Johnson, Meyer Law Firm, is here. We're going to talk a little bit. How about transferring real estate to your kids? Do you do it before you pass or after? We're going to chat about that. We'll also look at the concept of lending standards, propping up home prices, what happens when credit cards expire, their most and least expensive states for Medigap coverage. What is Medigap coverage? And do you think California is one of the most expensive or the least expensive? If you've been listening to Ron Siegel Radio, you probably I got a bad feeling. know the answer. Absolutely. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit, and the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? How does that make you feel, knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel, knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations. NMLS 21037 and DRE number 01869452. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. 
As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission. Lending partners will give a credit at closing. The title company has special published rates. And many other service providers have incentives, too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends over at Gold Star Mortgage, when you're ready for that next mortgage, first mortgage, refinancing. Maybe you want to get out of that old HELOC that the interest rates are going up on. Give me a call at 800-306-1990. We will see if that makes sense for you. What's happening in the market? I told you earlier that the 10-year treasury down on the yield, the interest rate down a basis point, 299 we're looking at the 30-year Freddie Mac rate, or the Fannie Mae bond right now. The bond is up eight basis points. That means interest rates are down just a little bit. That's just for the day. That Interest rates change on a regular basis. So what's happening? Well, it's uh, got a lot to do with the trade war fears heating up once again after Pre- President Trump threatened to raise the tariffs on $200 billion of Chinese goods from 10% to 25%. Yeah. This is causing the yuan to weaken versus the dollar further. Since April, the relationship between the yuan and the U.S. dollar has changed significantly. It used to take six and a quarter yuan to purchase one dollar. Since then, we have seen a huge spike in U.S. dollar strength when compared to the yuan, roughly a 10% increase. China has several economic weapons, one of which is manipulating their currency. That's a big surprise. Surprise! Surprise! Surprise. Think about this. The U.S. put tariffs on China in about in the amount of 10% so far. But if their currency is devalued by the to the dollar by 10%, it's like it never happened. If the U.S. raises the tariffs to 25%, well, you can see China devalue their currency further. If they do, it will exacerbate the issue we brought up a few weeks ago. We chat about it here on Ron Segal Radio. It will be much more expensive for a Chinese investor to purchase real estate on the West Coast, which could hurt the market. We've been seeing some of that going on already because they've also made it more difficult to get more money out of the country. Yesterday, the Federal Reserve released their statement from their two-day meeting, and it was uneventful, pretty boring. i got to get the yawn sound effect on here somewhere, guys. They had stated that the economy is growing at a strong pace. Surprise, surprise, we've been telling you that. More bullish than their previous statement of solid pace. The Fed has also mentioned that further gradual rate increases are necessary and that inflation has little has little changed, still near the target of 2%. They said that job gains are strong, unemployment remains low, and that household spending has grown strongly was their term, quote-unquote. Initial jobless claims measures individuals filing unemployment benefits for the first time show that there were 218,000 claims last week, represented an increase of 1,000 from the previous report, which was unchanged. That's unusual. They usually change them a little bit. So we got a lot going on there. The jobs report comes out tomorrow. We're going to be watching that. ADP report showed 219,000 jobs created. That was it came out yesterday. That is private sector jobs. So we'll see what comes out with the jobs report tomorrow. It always moves the market. So I am going to suggest to you, if you're looking at getting a loan, lock that loan in today before the jobs report Take the uncertainty out of the market. Great firms like Gold Star will let you capture some downside if that happens, if the rates go up. 
There's not a whole lot that can be done if you're not locked in. That is the Mortgage Minute. Again, brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage. They're the only ones with the Fast Pass loan approval. Check them out. Give me a call, 800-306-1990. I will put you in touch with the right people. That's the Mortgage Minute. Chatting this morning, uh, Jonathan Johnson is in to share with us. Always comes in with some great information for us, educating us on a combination of it's, it's a state as easy for me to say <laughs> estate planning is our topic with Jonathan so what do we need to know and today let's uh, you know I've been going through some many of you know uh, estate planning now I've, I've been a an evangelist I guess is the right term for people that do estate planning and make sure they get their estate done I have been involved with a friend who passed on who had done nothing and now I'm dealing with my mom's estate. She had things in place. And I, I get calls from you all the time about, Ron, should I do this? Ron, what do you think about that? And I can tell you what my advice is, call the Meyer Law Firm and ask this question. Because they're the experts, right? I can tell you the questions to ask. I, and I've, I've, I've come up with more questions while I've been going through the process myself. But good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. So here's a question that came to me just recently. I had lunch with a, a, the parents of a football coach of my son's. And they're getting up in age. Uh, they're seasoned. I never say they're old because I'm getting there myself. I hope to get there. That's right, what so they say about resumes, too. It's a, he's a seasoned professional. Exactly. Right, right. <laughs> So the concept was, you know, maybe we should give our house to our son now, or maybe we should put him on title, or maybe we should move in with them. Give me some uh, thoughts there. What it, transferring kid, property to a kid? Yeah, well, it, it's it's actually concerning how often I get that question and call. Uh, a lot of times it's a do-it-yourself estate plan where it's like, well, I have an only child or I have a couple children and I'll just add them. I don't really have any other assets. I'll just add them to my to my house or I'll put the, them as beneficiaries. Well, you know, there's, there's some pros to that. It's easy and it's inexpensive to do that. The cons are that in California specifically, you're really subject to capital gains issues. And um, a lot of people think, oh, it must be a gift issue or a gift tax issue. It's not really the problem. It's a capital gains problem because when mom or and dad bought that house, they bought it for maybe a few hundred thousand and now it might be worth, you know, eight hundred, nine hundred, a million dollars. Um, you know, you have to pay capital gains on the difference of that. If it's not your primary residence, you get no exemption. And if you, it is your primary residence, you get some exemption. So it's a real tax uh, trap to do that. So while it sounds good in theory to avoid probate, you're, you know, if you have a million dollar house, you're going to pay 50000 in probate. But if you uh, have a $500,000 capital gain, you know, on your house, you could be pay paying, you know, $200,000 in capital gain. So you're tripping over dollars, picking up pennies in that scenario. Uh, it's, it's, it's not. Now, why does that happen? I mean, it's something like a, a, is there a step up or something or a basis issue? Yeah. So this, you, you know, the, the, <laughs> it sounds, morbid, but the best way to transfer money to somebody is to die and leave it to them. <laughs> okay. So when you die, uh, the recipient uh, receives what is called the step up in basis or the value. So there is no gain, you know, once you receive it and then sell it. So to give you an example, let's say mom and dad bought their house in the 70s for $300,000. That, that was a pretty expensive house in the 70s. Well, in California and the coast, it, it, it can be, and it's pretty, pretty common. And then now it's worth a million three. Okay. Okay, and so uh, if they were to sell that house, uh, you know, they were able to get an exemption because it was their own house, uh, and then they'd have to pay the difference in tax. If they were to give that house to a, ch a, a child and the child were to sell it, they'd have to pay basically a you know million dollar. Um, Gain, which would okay. be about forty percent, and so they're going to pay you know four hundred thousand dollars in tax because they did it incorrectly. But now, if they die, they leave the house to the the children, and the value of the house is now that million dollars or million three. I don't remember what we called it. Uh, the million three. I write them down because I'm not yeah. very swift. I, you know, I'm, I'm a simple guy. I can so, remember things about thirty seconds. So, so. anyway, so million three value. Yeah, million three value, uh, and they sell it. There's no tax due because the house is valued at, at at death when mom and dad left it to them. So they don't have to pay a capital gains tax on that. Okay, so you, you save a, a huge amount of money yeah. by getting professional guidance. Uh -huh. 
hundreds of thousands <laughs> of dollars. Well, you know, not only that, to avoid a probate, you know, which sure. would be, you know, up to 50000 for a million dollar estate, but it, that's really not the main issue with transferring assets. It's the, the main issue is not estate tax anymore. I mean, you can transfer, you know, you have over $11 million now per person, $22 million for a married couple to transfer without getting an estate tax. Uh, but capital gains is really the biggest threat right now uh, when it comes to transferring assets. And a lot of people trying to get money or assets out of their name to qualify for benefits or to make sure that there's no, there, it's easy or that they can help mom and dad. And while it's in, the intentions are good, the, the ramifications can be pretty disastrous financially. Okay, so when we come back, I want to talk about getting that dealing with the benefits how do we how do we handle that because that is a big issue we don't want to spend that whole million dollars right. you know on on uh, the, the the nursing home right. so we're going to talk to Jonathan about that when we come back we might have time to even play a little I guess the word what would be the word uh, hypothesize I guess it's not not uh, that's not the right word my mind is blank right now but uh, what happens if we go through the step up process that they're talking about in Washington DC today so we might uh, chat with Jonathan about that one as well you're listening to Ron Siegel radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets are lending standards propping up home prices it could be we're gonna talk about that as well and what happens when credit cards expire all that and more you can reach me anytime our off-air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. On Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1. Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Siegel Lending Team offers you buying power. Let's say you can afford a monthly mortgage payment, including principal and interest, of around $1,900. With today's rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage of 3.75%, APR 3.85%, that payment could support a $416,000 mortgage. But if you wait and rates tick up to around 6.5%, which is roughly the average home mortgage rate over the past 30 years, that same $1,900 mortgage payment, including principal and interest, may only be able to support a $314,000 mortgage. That's over $100,000 worth of home. You're missing out on by waiting. That's buying power. All you need to do to get started is reach out to the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Payment example excludes taxes and insurance. Call us for full details. 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Or SiegelLendingTeam.com. Equal housing lender. Licensed under NMLS number 217037. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 35 and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal Housing Lender. Homeowners that are 62 and older are about to find out a great way to live a better retirement. It's called a reverse mortgage, and SLT can help you learn more. Call the Siegel Lending Team at 800-306-1990 right now to receive your free booklet with no obligation. It answers questions like how a reverse mortgage works, how much you qualify for, the ways to receive your money, and more. When you call the experts at Siegel Lending Team today, you'll learn the benefits of a government-insured reverse mortgage, how it will eliminate your monthly mortgage payments, and give you tax-free cash from the equity in your home. Here's the best part. You still own your home. Now is the best time to take control of your retirement. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990 to get your free brochure. 
Call today or visit our website at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or simply call 800-306-1990. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. The real-time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text NEST, N-E-S-T, to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does NEST. N-E-S-T to 79564. Back in 2005... Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan described the dramatic increases in residential real estate values as a, quote, froth in housing markets, unquote. Greenspan went on to say the increase in the prevalence of interest-only loans and the introduction of more exotic forms of adjustable rate mortgages are developments of particular concern. Some households may be employing these, these instruments to purchase homes that would otherwise be unaffordable and consequently their use could be adding to pressures in the housing market. Greenspan was warning that the loosening of lending standards could lead to disaster. You notice I said that in 2005 is when he said that. I wonder what happened three years later. It did, obviously. With home prices again appreciating at percentages well above historic norms, many are wondering whether the market is again becoming frothy. Mortgage standards are much stricter now, however, than they were in 2005. If you remember 2005, we only had two guidelines to the lending standards. Can you fog a mirror and are you, you were then approved? That was it, right? If you could fog a mirror, you got a loan. That was, that was the standard. The Urban Institute's Housing Finance Policy Center issues a monthly index which measures the percentage of home purchase loans that are likely to default. A lower score indicates that lenders are unwilling to tolerate defaults and are imposing tighter lending standards. A higher score indicates that lenders are willing to tolerate defaults and are taking more risks. Their July Housing Credit Availability Index revealed credit availability rose to 5.9% for, con- for context. They won- went on to explain, I quote, significant space remains to safely expand the credit box. If the current default risk was doubled across all channels, risk would still be well within the pre-crisis standard of 12.5% from 2001 to 2003, for the whole mortgage market. And I shared a graph of this on our social media channels earlier today. The bottom line, though, it may be slightly easier to get a mortgage today than it was a year ago. Lending standards are nowhere near where they were during the buildup to the housing bubble. Again, can you fog a mirror and you are approved? That is the Mortgage Minute, or I'm sorry, that's the real-time real estate segment brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text NEST. NEST to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. They do a great job of getting you that information as quickly as anybody. How about a text message when the home meets your standards? We're continuing our conversation this morning. Jonathan Johnson is here. Meyer Law Firm is the name of the company. Been talking about real estate and transferring wealth. It's a great topic to share this morning. So we're talking before the break, Jonathan, about transferring a property to somebody's, uh, to the to your offspring, to your kids. I guess that's generally the way it's done. I would certainly hate to ever get a piece of property from a kid, <laughs> right? I mean, I couldn't imagine anything worse in life than losing a child. Thank God I've never experienced it, mm-hmm. but couldn't imagine anything worse in the world. Yeah, it's unnatural. Right? So benefits uh so what is what are the right ways of doing it i guess yeah so if you're interested in transferring the asset for you know uh probate avoidance or convenience or you know help uh you know using the uh revocable trust you know a typical revocable trust is always the best way to do it you retain the value once you pass you can still you know pass on with the step up in basis or you know that that 
that area to avoid capital gains, uh, and that's the best way. Um, and when it comes to benefits, the primary residence is traditionally an exempt asset, but there are the, all the more important reasons to have that in a trust because we got to go back because I'm a yeah, simple sure. guy, Jonathan. Go let's right uh, let's back up a little bit. So what, what we're talking about is there are state and federal benefits mm -hmm. that limit your amount of assets you can have. Correct. So if you're interested in Medi-Cal or if you're interested in a VA benefit, the primary residence is traditionally an exempt asset. Um, to When you say exempt, mm -hmm. does that mean that it's exempt from recapture as well? Sometimes, and that's okay. a great question. So yeah, you're talking about Medi-Cal recovery. Okay. Um, and so to avoid Medi-Cal recovery, that house should be into a trust or in a probate avoidance situation because you cannot uh, have a Medi-Cal recovery if there is no probate. Ah, so no Medi-Cal recovery if no probate. Correct. Interesting. It's actually a recent uh, change in their policy, and in, in, in California, oddly enough, is the most liberal in states where uh, you can protect assets. California's lip. California's liberal. <laughs> Now, really, Jonathan, I, I am totally shocked by somebody saying that. Surprise! 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 Wow. Okay. So, so we're so we're that's the that's the the focus of where we are is talking about how to not lose your assets because here's the issue that I, I hear on a, on a regular basis mm -hmm. is you've got Mr. and Mrs. Smith and Mr. Smith takes ill, mm -hmm. needs to have either be put into a nursing home or some sort of uh, um, um, uh, mind care facility. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Smith said, okay, you know, I'm going to lose everything I have and I'm going to become destitute because I want to make sure and do what's best for my husband. Right. And that happens a lot. The caregivers are always the one mostly at risk, not the ones who are ill and the survivors of those caregivers. Um, I do want to state that the house is exempt while it's in house form. But if you want to sell the house to, to pay for expenses or to have cash flow, that cash is not an exempt asset. So there's ways you need to protect that as well prior to selling the house. So that's a whole nother conversation, but I just wanted to make sure that, that you know people understood that the house, the primary residence, and only the primary residence, is an exempt asset uh, for benefits, nor subject to recovery as long as it's in a trust or in a, in a situation where it will avoid probate. Um, but the problem with avoiding probate and not using a trust is you've most likely added a family member who will not receive that step up in basis. So when you're looking at asset protection- Well, you've, got, you've lost me there. Yeah, so. Sorry about that. Okay, so to step backwards here, so mm -hmm. if you use the trust, the trust will uh, will protect you from a capital gains problem from transferring the asset to a child. Okay. It will also reduce or uh, get rid of the medical recovery factor if you are receiving medical benefits. Okay. And you will avoid probate. Medi-Cal recovery and no probate. Right. Okay, so but then you then you mentioned something about that you something with, about one of the beneficiaries. Yeah. So if you don't if if you don't use a trust and you add the beneficiaries we've talked about. Oh, okay. Most likely a beneficiary to that to that. Uh, the house is a, uh, a child uh, that you've added jointly, and then you run into capital gains problems. Okay, so now you have the cap gain problem. Yeah, okay. So while you can avoid a probate by adding somebody to the house, which would not be your spouse, obviously, uh, then uh, you know you're running into that capital gains problem. So while there are these this relatively new uh, vehicle uh, to add uh, a transfer on death. Um, onto a, a California D. That's a relatively new thing as well. Those have their own issues, but that, that's another way to avoid having to use a trust and also getting the step up in basis. So we've got a lot of issues here. So what, basically now, I'm gonna share this with you and I don't wanna, I don't wanna sound smug or cavalier in any way, but I speak to a lot of attorneys and professionals in the estate planning space. And I get a lot of information from this space. And you can see how confusing it is to somebody, a simple guy like me, right? So what that really is saying is you need to schedule an in-depth conversation 
and pay a firm. And I, I understand that it's money out of your pocket, but you've got to pay a firm like Meyer Law Firm to go and get this kind of guidance if you want to save. We're in Southern California. Call a spade a spade. We've got high real estate prices. Orange County, I think the last number I looked at, median home price, $813,000. We just spoke about yesterday, San Jose, San Francisco, median home prices, over a million dollars. Right? So... I don't know what the Meyer Law Firm charges per hour. Say, I, say they're one of the, the, the elite firms of the world and it's $1,000 an hour. And I don't know what it is. I have no clue, right? I, I'm not a, doing a commercial for them. But if you had to spend four or five hours understanding all this stuff and finding out what it's going to take for your family, don't you think it's worth it when you're talking about a, you go to probate. Now, Jonathan, you correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding, if I have a million dollar house and I go to probate and I owe $900,000 on it, it's still going to cost me $50,000 for probate. Correct. Uh, when they're factoring in probate costs, which are regulated by the state of California, there's actually a fee schedule. You know, it's it's a complicated, convoluted, but let's say it's the average is 5%. You know, it just depends on how much, uh, how many assets you have. They don't factor in your debt or what, what you have. They factor in the gross value. So for instance, a million dollar house at 5% would cost you $50,000 in probate just to get your family, your your property. And not only does it cost $50,000, it takes time too. The average time for probate in the state of California is anywhere from 18 months to 24 months. That's average. That's if there's no, it's, nobody's contesting it. And the reason that it's taking so long is they're back ordered. They're totally back ordered with the, trying to get into court. It's just scheduling. It's like getting a haircut. You know, somebody and can't get in for months. Same with the court system. So it's taking an extraordinarily long time. Nobody's winning but the attorneys and the and, and the state of California when it comes to the fees. And um, really, it's a it's a headache when you could have avoided it a lot earlier. But people don't like to plan. Yeah, they'll spend more time dealing with uh, planning their their next summer vacation than they're going to plan on what they need to live in retirement and how to disinherit the IRS. We're going to talk more about that with Jonathan Johnson when we come back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. We will also chat about what happens when your credit card expires. All that and more. You can reach me anytime off air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsiegelradio.com radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel and if you miss any part of our broadcast two ways Ron Siegel one on YouTube Ron Siegel the numeral one on YouTube or you can go in the archives Ron Siegel radio.com just go into the archives the broadcasts are there both audio and video as well stay tuned we'll be back in just a few Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Most businesses struggle to get the online reviews they need to get a competitive edge over their competition. Rex is a brand new technology that uses text messages to direct happy clients to your online review sites, Zillow, Google, Facebook, and Yelp, and unhappy clients to a private survey so businesses can win more customers. Try Rex today by going to www.meetrex.com. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? 
To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Mortgage-free home ownership. What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call the Ron Siegel Team at 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no-obligation real estate plan. You be the judge if this is right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to reap at ronsiegelradio.com or call today. Ron Siegel, 1-800-306-1990. That is 1-800-306-1990. Great subject to change and without notice. Licensed by the California DOC and BRENMLS 217037 and 145502 and CalBRE 01869452 and 1866775. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 one nine nine zero eight hundred three zero six nineteen ninety. The Your Credit Matters segment today being brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. You have a credit report. It is wrong. They're all wrong, in my opinion. What are you doing about it? Credit Sanitizer has the solution for you. What happens when a credit card expires? So on the expiration date. It's a specific month and year when a physical credit card expires. The account does not close on that date, but is the last date when you can use that card. Generally, they're doing it based on the last day of the month that the show's on your card. It's not the first day of the month. Most card issuers will send you a replacement card at least a few weeks before the expiration date. The new card will have the same credit card number, but a new expiration date further in the future. If you ever accidentally destroy a card, the same thing happens. Send you a new one with a new expiration date farther in the future, but because your account number stays the same, it does not affect your credit or anything else in your finances. You just have to start using the new card. What does not happen on a credit card expiration date? More important than what does happen on the date is what does not happen on that date. Here's a quick look. Your card does not close. On the credit card expiration date, the physical card in your wallet expires, your account does not expire, and should never close without your consent unless it is inactive or you do not adhere to the account terms. Your account number does not change. When your card expires, you get a new card, same number, new expiration date. Again, if it's stolen or lost, then they'll change the number. It does not harm your credit. Opening and closing credit card accounts can have a temporary negative effect on your credit card score. Your card expiring does not close your account, so it does not harm your credit card score. And the most important question you're going to be asking, you know, your balance does not go away. If you hoped your credit card expiration date would get you out of paying, ah, sorry about that. That's not part of it. It doesn't work that way. Still have to pay the balance, but paying off is a good thing. It means you don't have to pay expensive credit card interest. Keep on with the, keep up working on those payments twice a month, as I've told you in the past. That's how you maximize your credit score, paying it. You know, it's amazing how if you do things the right way, it benefits you in a lot of areas. We've been chatting about that this morning with Jonathan Johnson, Meyer Law Firm, about doing these things the right way. The issue we've been talking about today has had to do with planning your affairs. Now, we spoke yesterday, Chris Bissonette was in, and we were chatting a bit about the idea of the conversation. It's one of the things that I've really appreciated about Meyer Law Firm, and Jonathan's here with us now 
Uh, Josh and Laura Meyer have both been in with us on broadcast and we've chatted about these things. The, it's the conversation. What is the conversation? So Jonathan, it's a, one of the big things that I know that you uh, at the Meyer Law Firm really profess a lot is that last gift, right? The gift of the family of someone and it's never an easy, I shouldn't say never, I, I would venture to guess, it's rarely an easy time when, when a loved one passes. Yeah, no, it's not. It's, uh, it, it, it's a stressful time, and it's important that you know, you're not taking advantage of people in that scenario or in a crisis. And that's what a lot of uh, attorneys can do, you know, like a funeral home director. Oh, you want the best for mom. You know? Right. Well, we really take the golden rule approach and treat you as we want to be treated or as if you're a family. And so we really only want to give you what you legally need and what's best for you. Of course, there are always options and desires for you. But in the, in, in the end time, when you're dealing with uh, an, a probate or an estate trust administration, those type of things, uh, it's e pretty easy to get taken advantage of. But it's important to know that uh, you know the, the right ethical attorneys are out there to help you. And, and as you know, and that's absolutely what I was getting at. And one of the other things I want to get to also is having that family conversation. Yeah, yeah the, the family conversation is, <laughs> I always say estate planning is the best gift you can give your kids. It's not really for you, you know? It's, sure. It's for your kids. Uh, asset protection can be for you, but when it comes to estate planning, just making sure that they don't have to go through the hellish process of probates or uh, the expense, you know, of that. It's not costing you anything. You're past, right? It's, right? it's for your kids. The other thing a lot of people really miss is the um, power of attorneys. Uh, you know, incapacity is actually a much more prevalent thing than dying right off the bat now. It used to be you just died, now you have incapacity issues. We spend a lot of time in conservatorship court for people who don't have those legal documents because mom and dad have dementia and can't handle their own legal affairs or, or any health affair for that matter. So, And that, that's a, that can be a tricky issue also. Sure can. Uh, you know, I've got a friend of mine who's got a conservatorship of his mom. Mm. And she ended up grabbing the car keys and going out after she was not allowed to drive any longer, and he became liable. Yeah, and because you are the guardian, it's like you're their parent, right? And so the the roles have reversed, and so you are responsible for them. Uh, at the same time, too, you at, you have to check in with the court anytime you want to, you know, make an expenditure. You have to make accountings. There's all that accountability, and it's not private. Uh, and you're making, you know, you're having to be accountable to people who don't know your family or don't know your history. And so, uh, and it also opens it up to a lot of family strife when you know you have people with resentments. Uh, and accusing each other of doing things that really may or may not have happened uh, because, uh, you know, nerves are raw. So to avoid all of that, we want to reconcile. To avoid all that, we want instructions. To avoid all that, we have the right uh, documents in place to make sure that your family isn't torn apart. Uh, the, nothing can fit, tear a family apart more than the disagreement of how to handle the care for mom and dad or how to handle the assets of mom and dad. I've seen great tight families just broken apart by this type of thing because of a difference of opinion or greed. Yeah, some people think that they understand what the, the departed wants. Mm -hmm. And or the ones with incapacity. Yeah. Right, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's amazing how, how that can be. And a plan up front can really solve that problem. And especially nowadays, uh, you know, you, you meet with the attorneys and the people that understand these issues. And you can actually pretty, pretty much do a video of it. Yeah, absolutely. And what we do, we uh, included in what we do is a, as a memory vault. A lot of we used to call it a legacy interview, but that sounds kind of high flutin and for rich people. So we, uh, we do a memory vault where it's like, this is what I want, and this is what I want for you, and this is the history of our family, and this is, these are the things. And so it comes right from the horse's mouth when they're capable and or alive. Um, it takes a lot of the guilt off of the children as well to have to make decisions about their parents uh, without uh, you know knowing what they wanted. Uh, it's really important that communication is key and that's really what we're talking about. Most of the world's problems today uh, within families, within governments, within anything just really you know rests on the whole problem of communication. So the more communicative you are with your family, the more specific your documents, 
the less issues there will be. So, and yeah, exactly. And that, that's the whole issue. And that was kind of what we got to when we were talking about, you know, yesterday we were talking about financial planning side of this. Today we're talking about the legal side of it because, you know, you can have all those plan financial planning issues. But if you don't take care of the documentation, that's why we're a big, big proponent, Ron Siegel Radio, of the ho household board of directors, <laughs> right? I mean, because you've right. got, you know, you guys have a specific, at the Meyer Law Firm, you have a specific lane that you're filling. Mm -hmm. Right? If I ask you uh, what's the latest guidelines on lending, you're probably not going to know those answers. I'd call you. Right? <laughs> the same situation is I don't know what the laws, I mean, you, you mentioned earlier that there was a transfer on death deed, deed right? That's and something I always suggest, but it's I just want people to know that it exists. And that but it exists for, I would assume, now, now I'm a big proponent, Jonathan, you tell me if I'm wrong here, mm -hmm. um, that there was never ever a bad loan product. There are bad applications of loan products. Right. So this product may not be right for everybody, Correct. but there might be an individual that it's good for. Absolutely. And there would be ones that I would suggest it for. Uh, you know, it just depends on the equity in the house, what the purpose of the, the, the process is, the, uh, you know, uh, the risk involved with it. But yes, it, it, a lot of people can't afford an estate plan or don't want to deal with that part of it, but they just want to make sure it's a quick fix to avoid a probate situation. So it's not... A, it's not all bad. There's a one more than one answer or more than one way to yes. And a lot of people just pick their lane and say, oh, this is the best and this is the only. And unfortunately, that's just not how it works. Absolutely. So the idea here, get great guidance. Call and make an appointment. Meyer Law Firm. Jonathan Johnson is here with us sharing questions for you. I should have said this before, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Not giving any legal advice this morning. We are just trying to educate people mm -hmm. that there are issues out there. There are benefits and there are ways to do things. And you don't have to break the bank to do it. Meyer Law Firm is one of the great sources that we like to give you all the time. And we also ask you to set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to Steve, who's engineering us today. And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime. 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio.